Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? For live. Are you ready? Let's do it. Live. Are you ready? Live. This live. Are you ready? Are you ready? The knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith Are you ready for live talk? Yeah. Because it's about time to set, set it, it on. on Are you ready Let's go. for the word of the day? Hey. The knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith Are you ready for live talk? Yeah. Because it's about time uh. to set it uh. on. Live, live talk The latest spirituality, uh, living in vital energy. Uh, the universal latest uh, spirituality. Uh, We're going all the way live with it. With live talk, increase your mentality, put away carnality, and increase your spirituality. Let's go. Live talk. Are you ready? This live talk. Are you ready? Live talk. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? Live talk. For the word of the day, uh, the knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith. Are you ready for a live talk? Because it's about time to set it off. All. Greetings and welcome to Live Talk. I am your host, Arthur Jeremiah, alongside my co-host, the minister, Samuel. Welcome again. <clears throat> All right, bro. It's episode, what, episode 21. 21. Man, we're rolling it on up, huh? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> you know, uh, brother, it's been a long week, and we're back at it again. You know, live talk, going strong, 21 episodes. We're so proud and happy of that, about that. <clears throat> and today, um, like always, we're, we're talking about something that uh, we feel like is very uh, dear to our community, and we want to highlight two phenomenal um, melanated sisters in our community that has done some real wonderful, great things. So today, that's what we're going to be talking about. Before we get right into that, we're going to give you a rundown of the show today. First, we're going to have the minister open up with a word of today. Right after that, we're going to go to a commercial break. And when we come back from the commercial break, we're going to talk about one of the sisters that we want to kind of highlight today. And then we're going to go to another commercial break and come back and talk about the other one. And after that, we're going to go to another commercial break and come and talk about the world news today. We're just going to highlight some things in the world news, give you a little commentary on that, uh, see what the thoughts is about that. And then if we have time left, we're going to go into the book reading and we'll get ready to adjourn and close out on this show. So with no further ado, Minister, what's the word of the day? <laughs> the word of the day is innovation, <clears throat> especially with the two phenomenal sisters that we'll be talking about today. I thought it was appropriate. Uh, but basically, innovation is a new idea, a method or device. It is a change made to an existing product, idea or field. Innovation is the successful introduction of new services, products, processes, business models, and ways of working. Innovation is also the process by which new ideas turn into practical value in the world. So in a basic sense, innovation means to improve or to replace something or just introducing something new for the first time. Yeah, I tell you, um, the <laughs> the two the two women that we're talking about today um, is the epitome of that when we talk about innovation. Yes. Um, uh, synonym to innovation is creation. I was thinking about that as when when you brought that word forth, you know, and just to give a a definition on creation. Uh, creation is defined as a new device or process, something you alluded to there, uh, resulting from study and experimentation. 
the creation of something in the mind, the act of starting something for the first time. Now, <laughs> when I think about creation, any in, even innovation, you know, I think about the uniqueness of how the most high have created each individual and place us on this earth. And that goes back to defining your purpose. Now, both of the sisters that we're going to talk about today have created and innovated things that not only benefit those of us in the, in the, um, the African-American community, but the world abroad. Yes. And when we think about this here, uh, you think about all the great leaders and the founders and the inventors throughout history, all of them was privy to the same information, but they all processed the information differently to be able to put their energy towards something that was positive and make a change in the world. And it's, it's powerful when you think about that. You think about innovation and creation. We always talk about this here, even when we when we talk about Kwanzaa being one of one of those um, those principles. Yes, uh, creativity and how we have kind of shied away from creativity, but we yes. see it and highlight it in our community with these sisters that we're going to be talking about today. Not only innovation, but innovators. Right. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> and I just want to share one more uh, one more thing when it comes to to creation, because the root word to creation is create and create means to make a cause to be or to become, bring into existence, pursue a creative activity, create a man, man uh, create or uh, manufacture a man made product, create by artistic means invest in a new title, office, or rank. And we're going to see a lot of this highlighted today when we talk about these sisters and how they moved up in rank based on their creative mindset. And I'm when we sorry. come right back, Minister, we're going to get a little bit more into that. And so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, shalom and blessing, y'all. This is Arthur Yeremiah Israel coming to you live. Listen, I'm so excited because my ebook version of The Spiritual Significance of a Name is now available. You can go to my website today at, at www.yeremiahisrael.com. Now, this ebook is pretty much available anywhere and everywhere that ebook is sold. I'm so excited about that because the ebooks are sold internationally. But I would like for you to go to my website at www.yeremiahisrael.com, pick up your copy, or you can go ahead and download the ebook version of it. Whether you're on a plane, whether you're traveling, whatever you're doing, pick up this copy. It's on a $4.99. It's not going to break your pockets and not going, you know, break the bank. So go ahead and get the copy of this ebook now, today. $4.99, go to yearmyyeshua.com and truly become blessed because it will truly put you on a path to defining your true purpose. Until next time, peace and prosperity. Well, welcome back to Live Talk. And today we're going to be talking about, again, two incredible women in black history and what we like to say unsung uh, leaders or inventors because a lot of people don't know about these women. And so we try to spotlight or highlight um, some of the, the things that are going on or have went on in our community so that we have brought up the date so we become conscious of some of these things because it's very important not only to us but to our youth to be able to see these type of uh, images and be able to be... Uh, you know, motivated um, by these type of um, individuals. So um, this this ain't just talking about history, but it's talking about her story, right? Yes, it's sir. talking about her story. So <laughs> we're going to get a little bit into that. But two remarkable inventors who have been overlooked for far too long are finally getting their due and making history in the process. Marion Croak, and Patricia Bath have become the first black women to be inducted into the National 
Inventors Hall of Fame, which has recognized over 600 inventors since it started nearly half a century ago. Now, this ain't been that long ago. No. That they, that they brought this into fruition. And it's, and it's amazing how, you know, these sisters finally get their they props. Yes. You know, and get looked upon as, as you know, their works have changed the world. Literally. Right. So we're going to start off. We, we, we're not going to get into both of them at the same time. We're going to start off with, with um, Marion Croak. And we're just going to give you a little background right here. So uh, watch this clip here, and then we'll, we'll kind of commentary, uh, do a little commentary on it as well. The world is very, very open to change. And it can be changed. So I had an unconventional childhood in that my parents gave me so much freedom to explore. And my father was a person who always encouraged me to ask why. And growing up in Manhattan as well, it expanded my horizons. It made me realize that the person that I am is not the person that everyone else is. People have very different perspectives on things and that the way that they see the world and their needs are very different. To this day, it influences me. In fact, it drove me or helped me decide that I did want to work for Bell Labs because I loved the diversity there. I really had to ask people what, what was going on at Bell Labs and I learned that brilliant people doing remarkable innovations there, and so I was hooked. So voice over IP is simply running a voice communication, having a dialogue with a person over the internet. And most of the people in Bell Labs and at and at the time did not believe in VoIP. I remember one person who was at the executive level who did believe in it. And he said, just keep going. Don't listen to them. Just keep going. Go as fast as you can. And we did. Then the feeling just left of being small. And I suddenly just grew by about 10 feet. And I realized that's where my power is. Like, my voice is a voice that will perhaps help to bring change to a company as long as I'm doing it on behalf of the company and the business and our customers. Marion uh, was very determined and very focused on the initiatives that uh, she wanted to work on. And you know, she was very bold, she did things that other people were afraid to do. When I think about the contributions that I've made in terms of technology, I feel very humbled. Um, I I'm just very grateful that people have been able to use it and that it's helped humanity. People discover things. People are, are the ones that are contributing and making science. I, I, I want to see things become better in my lifetime. And fortunately, I have seen that, but I wanted to keep going in that direction. All right, so, <clears throat> just watching that clip and just listening to her and listening to her talking about change mm -hmm. in the world, how she come into an environment at Bell, uh, Bell Labs. Mm -hmm. Now, just to give a, a, a little background, um, I don't know if you want to kind of share like Bell Labs and, and kind of like what, what they did in Bell Labs. <laughs> well, and even just from, and she's really phenomenal yeah. because back that background from the Bell Labs mm -hmm. and AT&T, I mean, she was working like in their engineering 
department, but it's like this was at the time when I don't know, you know, the, the you know, you used to have the if you remember the baby bill, my bill, all that. It was mm-hmm. and you know, and, and AT&T was kind of at one point they were they they held the telecommunications. Right. See, we, we seem to forget, but not too long ago, you had to pay for long distance. Right. It was per minute. Mm-hmm. And so it was a lot going on during that time. Yet that was an infrastructure that was really, I ain't going to say crumbling, but it needed to be updated mm-hmm. because the information era was coming. And then you got these giants in industry who was kind of you know, trying to keep moving in that direction. But here's this soft smoking, soft spoken, yeah, right. <laughs> intelligent sister telling them that straightforward that the infrastructure is falling apart right. and it need to be rebuilt. But the future is going to be in the internet. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you got this stronghold on, on telephone lines. Mm-hmm. So you're talking billions of dollars that need to be invested in the updating, but then you also had to be investing a whole nother part into the internet because the internet wasn't built up like that yet, but it was coming. Um, and it's like, she was, it just, it's, it's an amazing, it's like, um, I'm going to paint a picture for you, but this is a true story. They had her come into a meeting to talk with the CEOs and all of the, uh, the executives of the company and they were in a room that was not bigger than the area where we're standing in right now. And it was 12 people that came to this meeting, 12 men and this woman. And so it was uncomfortable. Right. First of all, yeah. and she's standing in there <laughs> having to tell them this. First of all, they're uncomfortable because it's like, why did y'all put us in this little small room? <laughs> and then we're listening to this new kid who have these ideas that we don't know nothing about. And they actually made her feel very uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. but she stood her ground and told him and explained exactly, you know, laid out what was going on. And when they left the meeting, she actually was thinking, I think it was one more young lady. She was talking to was like, well, shoot, this might, I might be finna get fired because it's like I know they nobody really didn't want to hear what I was saying and didn't right. receive it. And then she saw this guy coming down the hall. He was kind of like a you know tall guy. I think he was a senior vice president or the the, the, the guy who made the decision. Mm-hmm. And he walked in kind of like she was like, uh oh, here it comes. Mm-hmm. He came up to her and let her know, I heard everything that you said and I received it very well. And you need to push forward with it. Because this is what we need to do to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And it empowered her to go ahead and say, okay, this is, and and to make this happen. And she had to bring a team of people together from like the the telephone side Mm -hmm. and the internet side. And those two people were in different parts of the world mentally. She had to get those people to work together, put their differences aside, and she created what was called the dream team took her two years. But after she got the dream team together, voice over IP was what was the birth of that. Mm-hmm. And when you, when you think about going back to that and like what you mentioned, and she also mentioned it in um, the little, the short uh, video we just watched what she talked about um, getting that okay and that, that support to go ahead and I'm pretty sure at that time it was a very um, emotional moment for her mm-hmm. um, to be able to say, like, I got the support I need because I can see the data. I can see yes. what needs to happen in order to move us to that next level because they had Internet at the time. But mm-hmm. it was the analog that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> dealing with. So, it, it, you know, you had universities and, 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 and people like this using a lot of different um um, using the internet, but of course we weren't in, in the age that we're in today, uh, but it was a way to get some things done. It educated when you say analog, because see, some of us probably yeah. don't even remember what that means. Yeah, so so analog is is just a way of the information, when it comes, like, it's, it's a difference between analog and digital. Like, when they talk about the certain, and she's going to talk about in this this next um, uh, video, where she talk about how to, pa- uh, how to package, um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, pack it together, 
And like when you're sending out a digital single, um, they'll pack it and they're sent over and they'll open up on the other end. So you're going to talk about this a little bit um, later. But when you're talking about the analog, you're talking about going through the, the fiber optic and, and you get that that connection. But you'll see like a lot of times the difference between that may be a lag. Like yeah. if you can go through the analog, it's a more secure connection. But with the internet advancing like it has, when we came from what dial up, dial up, see, old, <laughs> slow from dial up to ineffective uh, <laughs> broadband, yeah. so it just opened up everything, you know. And when she was giving, and it was talking about the two different protocols, it was talking about the the a the um, I think it was the asynchronous um, transfer mode, and then it was comparing it to. Uh, TCP, which is a more uh, mm -hmm. ready use um, protocol that they use currently in, in today's uh, world. You know, we talk about TCP over IP. Right. Um, so that was something that they was debating about at the time. And they didn't know which protocol they wanted to use in order to advance the technology. And she was the one. Yes. She was the one that pioneered a team to implement this protocol into effect and everything else, like they said, is history. Mm -hmm. Because when you talk about like voice over IP, um, and I, I do want to, I do want to watch that clip before we get into it because I want her to be able to share that information, okay. and then we can get a little bit into it. So let's take a look at this clip here. Let's take a little trip back in time to when we all had phones in our homes. Yes, long before cell phones, we had landlines. These phones had funny looking plugs that went into our walls. They hung in the kitchen. They lived on our nightstands. Fancy people had them in the bathroom. But home phones are making a comeback and that historic wire is all but gone. It's because innovators dreamed that new communication might be with your voice over IP. Here's Allie Ward to explain. Some people build connections through conversation, others through sports or artistic expression. One way that Marion Croak, PhD, builds connections is through technology as a developer of voice over internet protocol, technology that converts your voice into a digital signal. Marion has received more than 200 patents for her work in the fields of voice and data communication. We connected from opposite coasts using technology that Marion played an integral role in developing. Dr. Croak, are you there? Hello. Hello. I think it's so fun that we get to talk to each other this way. <laughs> are we using voice over internet protocol to communicate right now? We certainly are. And it's been uh, amazing to see how ubiquitous it's become during COVID. Most people, when they're chatting over video calls, are using voice over IP. What's the way that cool people talk about it? They'll say VoIP. VoIP is the cool way of saying it. Can you tell me how VoIP works in a nutshell? When you're talking, you create sound waves. And those sound waves have a lot of silence in them. So think of having an internet connection and then packetizing, putting those sound waves, breaking them up into bits, almost like data, and putting them in envelopes, packetizing them, and then sending them across the internet, and then they're unpackaged. Marion says that since she was a young girl, and that's her on the left with her dad and her sister Susan, she's been attracted to problem solving. Anyone who would be able to fix something that was broken, all of those models really helped me to get on this path of being an engineer and a technologist. Through her combined expertise in quantitative analysis and social psychology, Marion's expression is technology, and her motivation is people. I have always been interested in human behavior and trying to understand why people do certain things or not do certain things. So humanity is extremely interesting to me. And then I love the logic of statistics. It just seemed like it was a very definitive thing as opposed to human behavior, which is quite mysterious at times. You need to have an imagination and you need to think out of the box. I think that that stimulates you into 
using your STEM background in very useful ways. Yeah. So, I mean, as we can see, she was a problem solver. That's how she kind of with the price of telephone calls as well as mm -hmm. long distance versus just calling somebody local. How can we get consumers, get our customers um, better pricing? Uh, how can we make communication better for them? And this was one of the things that, that really led her to coming up with the technology that she came up with, problem solving, how to, how to do this, how to do that. And she mentioned also her dad was one of the ones that always inspired her to ask why, mm -hmm. you know, why. So that was something that really motivated her and pushed her to what she is today. And currently, I think she's with Google. Google, she's Google, yeah. Mm -hmm. And her position with Google is, I think she's the vice president of engineering at Google. Yeah, she's moving forward. At Google now, she's actually in the research for the uh, responsible use of AI or ethical use of AI. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> she's been she went to Google and did a lot of things there. But yeah, she's she's really been very instrumental in problem solving. She's got like over not as a hundred over two hundred patents. Mm -hmm. And just to make it plain, she's the one basically that's responsible for us being able to use the internet in a way that we use it now. Yeah, like through this pandemic. If it were like we use Zoom or we use um, well, Google think about it. We, we wouldn't be doing this right now if it wasn't for her. Exactly. See, we, we, we could be on a Zoom call that one can hear our voice and actually see us. This is the technology that this sister came up with. <laughs> see, businesses, we, you know, I remember a lot of the boardrooms, they would have a conference room and they would have a very fancy telephone in a conference room and everybody could dial in even if they weren't at the meeting they could call in from other locations and it would be like a conference call right. but it was strictly voice mm -hmm. she took that to the whole next level that no we can do the data and get the video to go along with the voice and when you think about it like um the, the first company after creating the technology now because remember she just put the technology mm -hmm. out there and she she led the path and she, like, like they said, she pioneered this, this technology. You had companies then begin to use this technology. Exactly. Like the first company that, that used it was um, Vocal Tech. Now mm -hmm. they used it at a time in 1995, but remember we were still kind of dealing with uh, 1995. I think we still had what, uh, Windows 95? I Windows think we were 95. just really coming off of DOS. Just coming off, <laughs> exactly. Windows was a new kid on right. the block. So, so when how they was using the internet back then, a lot of the consumers and people like us didn't know anything about the internet. They was using it on for on an industrial level. Beep, that was beeper time. Right. That was that was right. cell phones, really. Right. And and what it was costing us then. <laughs> but listen, you at that particular time, you're like, man, I'm gonna have one one, one minute. One minute, yeah. And, the, and, <laughs> and I'm gone. <laughs> and, the, and the phone was huge like a brick. <laughs> <laughs> but just to think about <clears throat> this type of technology today, you, you find the youth kids, they don't even have to have service. They log into the Internet and they can they can use their phone. They can mm -hmm. talk over the Internet. <laughs> and that's the type of technology that this sister here has implemented and put in place. And because of that, she's been rewarded um, in entering into um, inducted into the Inventors Hall of Fame yep. this year, this year. <laughs> and that's why we're talking about this because it's something that's that's very close to us and it's, it's something that's very important to our community and we just want to highlight it we want to bring it forth we do also you know we we do want to open up the lines as well because we want you to be able to chime in too i know a lot of the information that we're talking about today some people may not know know a lot about um these two sisters but um for those that do and want to chime in by all means you can chime in, uh, share with us your thoughts about uh, what we're talking about today, um, what you feel about that. If you did some research on them, let us know what type of research you did on them. <clears throat> and let's, let's highlight them. Let's, you know, let's make, make them known <laughs> to the world. 
because it's very important at this time that we highlight those that are that, that throughout history and those that are current today that are doing great things in our community. See, it's our job to promote our own history and make it known uh, because you, you hear all the other big names about doing things. Um, but Dr. Croak name needs to be known because it's like she's the pioneer mm -hmm. that made all of this happen. Right. <clears throat> and just to think about it, this sister, <laughs> over 200 patents, she got 100 mm -hmm. patents right now that's still um, in process right now. Now, she's one of the, the two that is still alive. The other sister that we're going to talk about here shortly, um, she has passed away. She passed away in 2019. Mm -hmm. But um, this sister here is still alive. Uh, she's still going strong. She's still doing her thing. I'm pretty sure she she overseeing a lot of uh, things that are going on today. And before she probably leave this earth, there's probably going to be some other things that she <laughs> um, implemented brain forth as well. <clears throat> but when we think about like just the the process of uh, receiving a patent, you know, and we think about the, the history of that, how huge of an accomplishment that is, um, over 200 and some patents, it takes a lot to uh, to patent anything mm -hmm. when you think about get it. One. <laughs> yeah, to get to get one patent. And this sister got over 200 and some patents. So you have to think about the technology and the layers of technology that she had to get patents for just to get to this, this point here, because it's all dealing in technology. And when you think about the binary codes and mm -hmm. uh, you think about um, 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 IP addresses, you think about MAC addresses, you think about a lot of these things, a lot of those patents that she received was because of some of the, the technology she implemented and put in place that um, addressed and, and, and uh, directed the data. Kind of mm -hmm. like what we're doing right now today. Mm -hmm. Most of our information and data is going straight through um, the, the, in a digital format, but on the other end, it's been, um, it's been opened up well, it's going through in packets, but it meant open up on the other ends so that you all can be able to hear what we're saying. And it's a process in doing that. But sometimes it just seems like it's just real time, but it's not real time, mm -hmm. you know, because <laughs> yeah. it's a process of it being done. To, to make it happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. And like I said, she was a problem solver. She she could see where something needed to be done and then solved it. Not she would consider it, but then actually put the work in and make it happen. That's why she got all those patents, because it actually took a lot of know-how, mm -hmm. a lot of engineering um, to make it happen. And she's, I mean, she's brilliant, first of all. Right. <laughs> very brilliant. But it's very soft-spoken. Like, she's at Google now, but she does conferences for them and talks to rooms full of not just men, but women on empowering women when it comes to STEM um, so they can get into engineering and, and breaking these barriers um, that previously, you know, were not there, that were not accessible. Right. Especially to women of color. Right. And we, we definitely want to uh, make sure that this sister gets her props. And we also want to uh, speak a little bit about uh, my other sister. Um, but when you think about like Marion Croak, um, it, well, I'm going to call her name Marion Rogers Croak. <laughs> Uh, the reason she's so important to Black history, uh, she advocated for switching from wired phone technology. She advocated for this. And remember now, when you think about having something that's 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 secure, something that's that's solid. And here you go, you advocate to move from this here, and nobody can really see how this is going to benefit anybody at that time. Yeah. You know, but this we got, is we got billions of dollars in the ground. You saying we don't need to use? We, yeah, basically, she advocated <laughs> to move from this type of technology to internet. And I know in a lot of people here is even at that time, and it was good that um, that the one person that she talked about mm -hmm. supported her, and you know, in doing it. But I just think about what it would be like today mm -hmm. if it wasn't done. She had the vision. She had to be. Able, she was a visionary. She could see it, and it needed to be done. And you think about what came from this. Uh, you know, talk, think about Skype. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people use that technology. And I've seen people use uh, Skype been around for about nineteen years, mm -hmm. and I've seen people use Skype internationally. I've seen people that you know, and I've been in the, the, 
the technology and I and I see it oftentimes. Um, I, I've seen the transition from uh, AOL dollar. <laughs> yep, dollar. <laughs> so I've seen a lot of transitioning um, over the, the the time from a lot of these old systems. And just knowing that there's a sister that's behind a lot of the technology that has elevated a lot of this stuff is, is very, uh, I mean, it's, it's wonderful. You know, um, it's something that we really need to um, pay homage to. That's why we're so <clears throat> proud to bring forward a living testimony today of our, her story mm -hmm. of what not only was done, but is being done. And we're benefiting from it right. today. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> we're going to go to a quick commercial break. We're going to come back and we're going to highlight the, an another sister that has done some wonderful things as well. So we'll be right back. Hey, guys. Angela Scott with Scott Capital Finance. Don't you delay that refinance any further. Give me a call and let's pull the equity out of that home. All right, so welcome back. Um, as we was just speaking about uh, one of our um, sisters, uh, Marion Croak, uh, we still want to just kind of highlight her, but we also want to give props to uh, mm -hmm. Patricia Beth as well. Uh, she's also is going to be inducted into the Inventors Hall of Fame this year as well. So we want to give our, our props to, yeah. to both of them. And <clears throat> what we're going to do right now, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna watch a short video. Um, that's her telling a little bit about herself. And then we're going to just uh, get into this, uh, highlighting some things about her mm -hmm. as well. So let's, let's watch this short clip. Some eye patients are feeling like big winners because of a state-of-the-art eye operation that has given sight back to people who are almost totally blind. I was not seeking to be the first. I was only attempting to do my thing. It's only when history looks back that you realize you were the first. I was always a curious child. I was what they call a nerd. <laughs> when I joined the faculty in 1974, I was the first woman. And the office spaces were usually based on academic rank. The other assistant president was a guy. <laughs> and I think they felt uncomfortable at putting us in the same office. Ridiculous. So my initial office was with secretaries. <laughs> I'm a product of the 60s. And yes, when I was offered an office that was not equivalent to that of my male colleagues, I could have started marching. <laughs> but I felt it was more important to focus on the prize. Friends and colleagues, it's a pleasure to present this preliminary report on eczema laser cataract surgery. One rainy, cold, lonely night in the labs, working until 2, 3 a.m. Eureka Laser Faco came to the planet. I explained to the director what I had achieved, and he said, you didn't do that, that's impossible. There was not acceptance, and in some instances, there was anger that petite moi, little me, had indeed shattered the glass ceiling, had a scientific breakthrough, and he wouldn't look me in the face. <laughs> the narrative of surprise, it has to change. I realize that when I achieve these things, it helps what other women and other people of color, black women can do. But keep in mind, I never had any doubts. <laughs> I 
This this seemed like a very confident system mm -hmm. from the start. <laughs> Again, uh, we we do want to uh, open up the lines if you do want to chime in, just to you know to come in on you know the, the show and and some of the the the, the things we we're talking about today as far as uh, Marion uh, Croak and Patricia Bell. Uh, by all means, do chime in. We do want to hear from you. But this sister here was very confident in what she did. Yes. The information that she had, the information that she was privy to, um, and her uniqueness, being, being unique as she is, you know, we talk about, when we talk about creation or, or creativity, she already knew what she can do. Mm -hmm. All she needed was to go ahead. <clears throat> and it seemed like when she when she accomplished what she accomplished, she was met with resistance initially. <laughs> she said she's a product of the 60s. Right. Um, and it's like, here's another one, like Patricia Bath, Dr. B Brilliant. Yeah. And here you have a, an opponent, one of the, the like, uh, a lot of these were the first, like she was the first black African-American resident in ophthalmology in the New York University of Medicine. Yet this is laser pro, laser phaco probe, but I'm going to put it in layman's term, basically was for cataract surgery. And just to do a little background, she what she came up with was a she created this device, mm -hmm. created it, mm -hmm. made it. This had never been done before. And then realized that it worked and she patented it yet. And now this was a way that you could remove cataracts from people's eyes. Some of the people were blind. So she literally was giving sight back to the blind. Right. And I didn't do, realize this until I did the research before she did this. They used to use a method of grinding. Oh, wow. Yeah, grinding <laughs> the cataract off your eyeball. So it's like, oh, my God. Um, and unfortunately, it was expensive. So for a lot of people of color who were suffering with it, there was basically no treatment for them because either they didn't have enough prestige, they didn't have enough money. So they unfortunately were blind. So this was a way she found a way to break that barrier that no this can actually be healed. Um, and she is, she's the one responsible for cataract removal that they're doing today using the lasers. Right. And when you think about it, and like this says your product of the 60s, um, during that time, you, you're talking about uh, the civil rights movement. You, mm -hmm. you, you're talking about affirmative action. You're talking about a lot of different things that, hindered um us as as a people and moving forward to and moving forward to accomplish anything but here you go you got a very confident system she know what she know um <clears throat> see see and when you talk about um ophthalmology um i, I just want to give a definition on that because i i, I want people to kind of understand what that is and, and some of you may already know but ophthalmology is a branch of medicine that deals with the diagnosis and treatment of eye disorder. And an ophthalmologist is a physician who specializes in eye care. The credentials include a degree in medicine, followed by additional four to five years of residency, like you was talking about, and training in ophthalmology. So this sister put in the work. She put in the time and she knew what she was trying to accomplish at that time. She's seen even the plight in our community, <laughs> because I think if I'm not mistaken, um, a lot of what she she did, uh, we as a people benefited from that. Big, because it was a, a thing about the poor that is group and I can't, but she was doing it to work for people who couldn't afford it. Right. She was making it affordable. <clears throat> she, she created a technology that could make this health accessible, right? Healthcare accessible, because we it's um, we were suffering from that 
more than uh, other people. Mm-hmm. But we were not the ones being getting the benefit of being able to be healed because we didn't have the resources. And it seemed like what she created, like the invention that she created, the, the laser FACO. Is that FACO? Or FACO? Yep. Laser FACO, I believe yeah. it's called. So when she created this machine, what it allowed for um, them to do was to be able to remove the cataract from the eye before going in to replace the lens of like within the eye Mm -hmm. and that's what allowed for people like you mentioned before to be able to see without this technology even if they went through a process of doing it you still wouldn't have the vision that you would have based off of the technology that she created and and implemented so it was a huge accomplishment by her and and, you know that's why she deserved the, the props that she's getting today and, and being inducted into uh, the 2022 uh, Inventors Hall of Fame. Because see, the UCLA Medical Center, very prestigious. Mm-hmm. She was the first um, African-American woman surgeon there. Mm-hmm. The first. And it's like, she, there's another, like a Stein Institute. If you're a doctor, you know, these Steins was another group that was helping to prevent blindness. She was the first one of us to be a part of that because of what she brought and helped them with their goals of actually curing blindness. It's like, there's an institute set up to do that. And here's somebody that created something that's actually in align with what they're trying to do. And now you couple it together. And now you're actually literally helping people to see again, improve, not just improving their sight. In some cases it was reversed and they got their sight back. Right. In quite a few. Right. (laughs) And we think about she has a patent for this device. Um, and then I don't know the, the, how long after when it comes to like having a, a patent for something um, like that. But when you when you think about the history of patent anything here in this country, it goes back to 17, uh, mm-hmm. what, 1790, somewhere around there. And the first patent was um, uh, brought forth in, in, uh, through one of the, uh, the statues uh, when they, they implemented one of the statues. But then as you as you move forward, like if you move forward through history, um, a lot of that was revised in like around the 1800s, the 1860s. Um, but I, I think a lot of that deals with, when you think about it, made it more rigorous around that time. Yes. <laughs> when you, and, and when you think about these sisters <clears throat> being able to get patents, and that's why I, I, I want to get at history because it's, is a huge accomplishment for them to get patents on that type of technology. You know, that technology that changes the world. Yes. I mean, this is serious stuff when you, when you're thinking about this. Here. Yeah, it is it, like the, getting the patent and then putting it to work. Like when I mentioned that, that I, the Jules Stein I Institute, when she was there, she established another program. And I want to say the Carol to prosthesis program. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. But this was treating blind patients and thousands received a sight oh, wow. because of the work that she did. Wow. <laughs> thousands. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and this is mm-hmm. Patricia Bath, which we need to be celebrating these names mm-hmm. because this is a part of her story that needs to be told. That's it. Not, not his story, not her story. <laughs> but yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's a delight. <clears throat> For us, you know, especially as brothers, uh, to sit here and have this conversation about two uh, phenomenal women in our history and how much they have accomplished and how much they have contributed, not only to our community, but to the world. Yeah. You know, the whole world looks at them differently because of what they have brought forth and what they have invented. So, you know, just to say um, thank you ain't enough is yeah. to truly give a um, <clears throat> their props, and we, we we truly want to make sure that they're highlighted, that people know about them, you know, that you tell your children about them, um, that, you know, you're inspired, or they, they're inspired to, to live up to some of the things and uh, that they have lived up to, because when you think about it, <clears throat> um, coming through that time, it's almost like we don't have an excuse today. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, the time that they came from, and all the odds against them, <clears throat> we don't have any excuses today. 
you know, they they had their their counterparts um, could have easily probably took some of the information and 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 patent it themselves. And who would say that some of the stuff that they did wasn't patented by somebody else? Exactly. <laughs> you know, but she got at least. And the thing is, she's got five patents, but actually. I think she actually has eight or nine, five in the United States. She's got a, another three, I believe, around the world. Mm-hmm. But it's like she came up, like, say, in the 60s. And she actually had the opportunity. She actually met Dr. King and he was giving a speech and got to talk to him. And she says she only spoke with him briefly, but he was so charismatic and it was just it motivated her to move forward with what she was doing Um to make it happen because shortly after she met him, he was assassinated like that week, I believe, mm. after. Um, so it just motivated her to keep on doing what she was doing and look at what she established. That's true, because he said she could have easily um, been persuaded not to do it. Yes. Because <laughs> and went out there and started marching, but she mm-hmm. said, I'm gonna keep doing this. Yep. We got a we have a caller with the, the hand raised. <clears throat> caller with your hand raised. Um, you can unmute yourself. You are live on live talk. All right, that's me. Yes, ma'am, that's you. All right, this is Sister Kagi. Um, so glad I'm able to catch um, today's live talk. Um, a lot of times I'm working or unavailable, so this was really awesome. Um, just looking, I didn't catch the beginning, but catching the sister um, who had that um, the revolutionary turn of the century invention to help um, people regain, recover, and keep their sight is just phenomenal because you don't really hear about things like that. And that invention is something that's used across the entire planet Earth. It's not like she made it here and it stayed here in America. They had to go and teach people in India, in China, in Africa, in the Middle East, how to use this technique and this device in order to help more people across the world. Also, that time, like she said, she was a product of the 60s. Gender roles were really strong. So it wasn't so often that you can have a young Black woman to, to be in that position because a lot of times you're expected to meet a nice young fella, get married, have children, cook and clean, and, you know, be a, a good wife. That's so right. she got <laughs> able to really exercise her mental capacity and step out of the norm in a time where as a black woman that just wasn't a thing and if she had even did that in the 50s things could have been so much different for her so timing also was everything and played a big part in that and it's just awesome to see these um, black women using that you know, what they had learned in a time that there was no internet, information wasn't at your fingertips. And as a black woman, it could have been hard to get access to certain areas, you know, to get this information, but she did it. And she had, um, she had a passion and a goal to help people and change the world. She said she didn't even know that she was going to be, you know, this big, she just knew she had to do something with what she had learned. So that's just awesome. This was this was wonderful. I didn't even know that. This was just new information for me, and and this is awesome. Well, thank you for chiming in. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. Definitely good to hear from you. And mm-hmm. like what you said, it's like yet yeah, about in the sixties, and just to be a good wife, basically to tell her to stay in her place mm-hmm. and not use the intelligence that she had when. She graduated with like from Howard with a doctorate with honors. Mm-hmm. And when they give you a, somewhere to go to work, not that there's anything wrong with secretaries, right. but you're going to put a doctor who graduated with honors, someone who's right. brilliant, and you put her in the secretary pool. Right. What you really was trying to say is we don't want you mm-hmm. over here where we are. Right. Um, but she did not let that stop her right. um, in spite of that. <laughs> and, and that's what she was saying. I could have went out there and stopped marching for whatever reasons, because <laughs> that's what was going on at the time. But I, I, I chose not to allow that to stop me because I knew, see, her eyes was on the prize <laughs> and she could take her eyes off that prize. But that's true. Like going back and thinking about the 60s, 
And and like it was mentioned before, we talk about the civil rights movement and we talk about um, a lot of the things that was going on. We we as a people were still trying to gain our own rights. And yes. we know the how they, they treated the women. <laughs> yes. Now now you now you're talking about two black women. Yep. During during these times, especially her, um, during this particular time, you know, it's 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 amazing, and it's 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 I didn't say it's it's, it's Yahweh sent, yes, <laughs> you it know, is. it's a gift that that was given to us by the Most High. <clears throat> you're talking two beautiful women of color that were brilliant. Mm-hmm. So in that time, it's like, no, it's not like. It, I, it just, but I gotta say it because they had it wouldn't they wouldn't have passed the brown paper bag test. Right. It yeah. was their intellect right. that took them where they were. Mm-hmm. Because no, you they couldn't fit in. They were the ones that they didn't want to fit in. Mm-hmm. That's why they put them in the, the back office. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we, we didn't want them in the same office. We in. <laughs> but but to your point, you're right. They wouldn't have passed that test. And and it's amazing to see um, you know, our sisters or brothers, you know, with that complexion to be able to to keep the head on right and, and, and move forward and accomplish something as amazing as uh, these sisters have. And I think we got somebody to raise their hand. Yes. Um, Carla, with your hand raised, <clears throat> you can unmute yourself. Okay. Can you hear me now? Live talk. Yes. Hear you? Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. This is Shatula. This is Shatula from Nashville. And I just wanted to say today's topic, like the others, have been amazing. But this one was shockingly amazing because I certainly didn't know anything about these two sisters. And it's so humbling to see how with all of their knowledge, they still had a deep desire to serve. That is what motivated them, not personal fame and fortune. Uh, So it just warms the heart. But I just wanted to say briefly this is why this type of show is so important because we won't have an avenue for finding out about this kind of stuff unless somebody is bold enough and brave enough to make it happen. So kudos again to uh, you, uh, Brother Yeremiah, the host and producer, and Brother Samuel. It's amazing. So I just want to say real quickly that uh, what the sisters talked about to me is part and parcel of the very essence of white supremacy and that is they can never allow anybody's ability to outshine theirs because it proves that they are not superior this is why they had to burn black wall street and any other indication of black skill it's absolutely the twin psychological foundation of white supremacy that no one else can be equal to them let alone better So they will do anything. I don't care how crazy it is, even if it hurts them, that underpinning of white supremacy must mean that they cannot be found um, unequal to anybody. So just want to say, keep it up. Um, This is not new. This has been the whole notion of making sure that blacks were so-called inferior was the very foundation of enslavement. And just to show real quick that I'll be done, uh, at the end of the Civil War in 1865, when the Confederate government actually voted to try to enlist black soldiers in the Confederate Army, General Howard Cobb, who was, of course, one of the leaders in uh, the Confederate Army, said that if slaves will make good soldiers, our whole theory of slavery is wrong. So this is why the fight against letting our skills be known is paramount. And they stole all kind of invention credits from us because we had slave names. So nobody could even prove it. But even when they could (laughs) prove it, they simply stole the rights, claimed they did it. And that would be the end of it. So, again, kudos. Um, I love it. I'm almost in tears because. I'm just so touched about finding out about these two sisters. They are an inspiration to us and to anybody else that will hear of these great women. And we're going to have to spread the word about Life Talk. So thank you for letting me share. And thank you. Thank you for sharing, sis. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that comment. And it's, it's very important it's because it's, it's, see, but in spite of that, that's why the Most High will allow himself 
to come through. And then he comes through a sister to show that in the spite of all that you say, I'm going to show you who I am by coming through, you know, my seed and showing greatness. You know, it, it takes a God mind to see that there's a problem and then seek to fix it. Like unselfish, like Dr. Bad, she, she established before she passed the American Institute for the Prevention of Blindness. But this was to eradicate preventable blindness for, for racially minoritized populations. Mm -hmm. So it's like they were, she was very unselfish with what she did, which is why it's like you can't stop someone when they're unselfish right. about what they're doing. Right. And they determined yeah. about what they're doing. Okay, we have another caller with a hand raised. Caller with your hand raised. You can unmute yourself. Yeah. <laughs> live on live talk. Oh. Call. Oh, I Call. would just like to put Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, this is um Sister Leah. Hey. I just hey, welcome. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> I'd just like to say that it's nice that you guys are highlighting lesser known black people. It shows our achievements were varied and many. And even though we as black people already knew this, that you are getting it out to other people. Indeed. Thank you. Well, thank you for chiming in. It's good to hear from you. But that's, you know, and, and that was the whole thing about it. You know, when we talk about um, these unsung, we, we like to call them unsung uh, black leaders, unsung inventors and founders. Um, and, and it's great for those of us that research and, and kind of look, uh, looking for these, um, these unsung leaders and, and, and things of that nature. But for those that don't know, you know, to, to have a platform like our sister spoke of, to have a platform like this and to be able to share that information is always good to those that don't know. Um, about um, who these sisters are, or even some of our, our brothers, you know, maybe. <clears throat> that, and that's the purpose of live talk, they're giving the voice to the voiceless, because we have a rich history as a people of color. And we don't, of course, we don't want to minimize the greatness of people that, like um, Rosa Parks mm -hmm. and Sojourner Truth, you know, we, but we hear as great as they were. We hear about them, but we have so much rich history amongst us that we have to talk about, like these two sisters that are with us here today. Right. And if we don't tell their story, it's like people want to paint them into a corner as if they didn't exist. But the beauty of their genius mm -hmm. is, see, they patented it. Right. So you can't get around the fact you that they created a patent. <laughs> see, in the past, see, like say with the names, they could steal it. Mm -hmm. But they were smart enough, intelligent enough to patent, even though they were doing it unselfishly, put a patent on it so it will be remembered. Right. right. All right. So <clears throat> we're going to go to a quick commercial break and uh, we're going to come right back. And I don't know what we can get into when we come right back. I don't know if we can get into the real event, so we can get into the book read. <laughs> but we'll figure it out when we come back. <laughs> Stay tuned. At Scott & Associates Accounting Firm, you can get your taxes done in or outside of the office by an experienced tax professional. To schedule your appointment, give us a call today at 321-754-1360. The number again is 321-754-1360 or schedule your appointment online at www.countonscott.com. All right, so welcome back to Live Talk. Uh, we couldn't get into the real events like we really wanted to because we won't have enough time to really get into that anyway. So we get to go into the part where we talk about um, a little bit about the book reading for the day. And it's coming from The Miseducation of the Negro um, by Woodson. Well, it's a series by, by Carter Woodson, Woodson. 
Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the second chapter where it says how we missed the mark. And in this chapter, Wilson and his list of scholars talked about the emancipation uh, of the black race, <clears throat> how they were uh, free, but still enslaved. Um, in fact, the, you know, well, I would say economically enslaved <laughs> and how, um, and how work was so very scarce at the time uh, for the black man. Education was very important um, <clears throat> to land in any type of industrial job. And when you think about um, education from even then until now, one of the, the, the biggest things that um, um, drove uh, jobs at that time was labor. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, even today, labor is, is, is big on um, you know pushing uh, people into employment, uh, but one of the things when you talk about missing the mark, uh, when they when they came together um, in this round like the eighteen right after slavery, I was, that's why I was talking about the emancipation. Mm -hmm. um, black free black men and uh, men got together with poor white men, and that's how they they built and created the the public system that we sure. see today as far as the school system, the public school system. And they petitioned for, you know, taxpayers, of course, to pay for it. But one of the things that they implemented was the industrial education, as we may know now, vocational mm -hmm. education and the importance of that. And I think uh, in the book, it talks about how we missed the mark. Instead mm -hmm. of us really uh, putting our energy into a lot of that type of education so that we can begin to, um, you know, uh, employ ourselves or, uh, to get the jobs that we need and the skills that we needed, uh, we overlooked it. And when we even when we talk about that today, you know, uh, one of the things uh, we always talk about college ain't for everybody. Exactly. <clears throat> you know, but they got vocational schools that you can get a skill yes. and you can begin to work. <laughs> and this is what um, Woodson talk about in this book, um, that second chapter, of the miseducation of the Negro. He talks about um, how we missed that mark. And uh, even today, when you think about it, you kind of parallel, parallel it to today, uh, we're kind of looking at the same things that we looked at um, back then because we keep missing the mark. And it's due to what I feel is a lot of our, our youth not being able uh, to really understand this on a level that they can really grasp the, 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 the importance of it. Uh, as we have done in the past. <clears throat> so I want to share that, um, The Miseducation of the Negro. Um, there's going to be other books, like I always say, um, we're going to be talking about unsung Black leaders, unsung Black inventors. We're going to be talking about a lot of different things that touch us. I mean, in our communities, we, we want to make sure that we highlight those type of things. So we want you to always tune in, tune in to the show um, make sure that you go to our YouTube channel and you subscribe to our YouTube channel um, if you haven't already. Um, a lot of times we, we play premieres on there. Um, if you're already connected there, that's great. Um, but make sure if, you, if you're not, go there, please mm -hmm. subscribe to that. Um, become a, um, a follower of ours. Uh, follow that channel. Also on Instagram and Facebook, I want you to do the same. Well, we're going to go to a quick uh, announcement and then we'll be right back to close out. <clears throat> to stay connected to us, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Live Talk Orlando. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Live Talk Orlando. You want to come on to the show? Join us on the show? You'd like for us to interview you? Then email us at Live Talk Orlando. O -R -L at gmail.com You can also follow the host on Facebook at Define Your Purpose 2021 on Instagram at Yeremiah Israel and you can visit the website www.yeremiahisrael.com Make sure you pick up a copy of The Spiritual Significance of a Name all right, so welcome back. We're going to, at this time, get ready to close out, Minister. i give you. Yeah, just before we close out, I just want to say it was a wonderful show. So good to be able to talk about these unsung heroes. 
But just to point out that even though February is traditionally Black History Month or officially, we're not stopping because Black history is continuing. So we're going to continue talking about our unsung heroes uh, and we're not going to limit ourselves to one month. Right, right. <laughs> indeed. And I, and I think it's important that we do that. But I, I want to just thank um, all the listening um, audience uh, for listening in. I want to thank those out that's on Facebook as well for, for chiming in, listening um, and, and support. Stay, stay close to us, talk about us, you know, mention us to other people <laughs> uh, so that they can also follow us as well. And by any means, if you know, email us, you know, we talked about that, you know, uh, live talk ORL, email us if you at live talk ORL at Gmail, email us if you uh, know about any, uh, you know, unsung black leaders that you want us to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you want to come on to the show, if you know someone that want to come on to the show, email us. <clears throat> and that way we can uh, respond back to you, get you on the show. Um, we, we would love to have you. Um, but at this time, we're closing out. So I want to say from the host, peace and prosperity. And then from Live Talk, we are out. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? For live. Are you ready? Let's do it. Uh, Are you talk. ready? Uh, this live Are you talk. ready? Uh, live Are you talk. ready? The knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith uh, Are you ready for live talk? Yeah. Because it's about time to set, set it, it on. on Are you ready Let's go. for the word of the day? Hey. The knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith Are you ready for live talk? Yeah. Because it's about time uh, to set uh, it on uh, Spirituality, uh, living in vital energy, uh, the universal language of spirituality. Uh, we're going all the way live with it. With live talk, increase your mentality, put away carnality, and increase your spirituality. Let's Are you go. Ready? Live talk. Are you ready? This live talk. Are you ready? Live talk. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? Live talk. For the word of the day, uh, the knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith. Are you ready for live talk? Because it's about time to set it off.